All right, I'm gonna get us going here. I'm gonna let, uh, let the chefs take over, but I just wanna welcome everybody tonight to our Social Cooking Connections. This is one of our um, big events for this year and we're super excited to have um, Sean, Annalise and Emma joining us here tonight. So welcome. Um, as you know, tonight's meal really features the strawberries and we thank Red Barn Berries for their partnership with us on this. What you might not know is that Thursday the 24th, so a couple of days ago, was actually the first um, four full moons during the summer and it's actually called the strawberry moon. We learned this just the other day, Kathy and Hendrika um, did some cool research and found out, but um, it actually has its origins in the indigenous culture, refers to ripening of strawberries and other fruits that occurs in June and July. So kind of a little fun fact, some native um, stories there. And the medicine of the strawberry is actually um, in reference to reconciliation. So it's during this moon cycle that communities would hold their big feasts and they'd welcome everyone home and didn't matter about differences in the past. It was all about letting go of judgment and um, just really embracing each other. So kind of a neat little twist to tonight's meal. And so it seems uh, very appropriate here as we um, join in a, in a feast and chef and meal tonight together. So I'd like to introduce um, Sean and his fiance Annalise. So Sean Pike here is a, a local chef. He's been a local chef here for about six or seven years. And prior to that was out on the East Coast for six years training and, and being a chef out there. He's a well-talented um, guy I know because I've had him do some great dinners for me in the past. And uh, Annalise owns and runs the wine cellar and cheese shop in Ingersoll. The shop sells over 60 different kinds of local and imported artisan cheeses. They have local honeys, mustards. They do these really cool um, charcuterie boards and nosh boxes on the weekends and things like that. So definitely worth checking out if you've never been there. It's pretty awesome, as well as a uh, big batch wine. So we're pretty lucky tonight. Got some really awesome people here in my kitchen with me. And uh, I haven't even mentioned yet Emma as well. So Emma's also here and she's Annalise's daughter and she's gonna be joining them in the kitchen. So I'm sure we have lots of families out there and you're gonna see Emma in action as well. So I ask you to please turn your microphones off if they're not off. Um, if you do need to ask a question through, uh, enter into the chat, I'll do my best to monitor as, as will Sean and Annalise. But um, if you, for some reason, we don't catch it, shout it out, you know, unmute yourself and shout it out so we don't miss any questions. We wanna make sure you get the, the gist of what you're supposed to be doing. All right, aprons on, let's get ready to go. We're gonna kick things off and go time. have fun. Hello everyone. We're gonna have a little fun filled uh, family cooking night here. Uh, we're gonna take it seriously, but not too seriously. We're gonna get the kids involved. And the wives, fiance is involved. Um, yeah, just makes some good food. Then we're just gonna have a little fun filled night. The kids are gonna help out doing some cooking. The fiancés, the wives, uh, the girlfriends, everyone in between. The pets, if you want. Uh, we're just gonna make some fun, fun cooking. Obviously, uh, strawberries are gonna be the theme. Um, so we have a nice chicken uh, dish with some balsamic uh, strawberry sauce on top. We're doing a little angel food cake and marinated strawberries. Um, we're at the end of asparagus season, so I was happy we could still slide that in there. And then one of my favorite sides being um, the uh, warm potato salad. It's uh, been a dish I learned way back when I started school and worked at the Hotel of East. Uh, it's been a, a favorite of mine, so we're going to, uh, that'll be a side to go with the dish too. So we'll have some fun. Hopefully uh, we can see some pictures after, um, if you can tag us in it. Um, that, that'd be great. Uh, now we can look through all your beautifully presented dishes and uh, I'm excited to see what they look like. So, so let's, let's have some fun. We're, we're going we're gonna to kind of okay. jump around a little bit. Uh, yeah, so we're going to kind of jump around a little bit because uh, different things take a little bit uh, different times and stuff. So we're going to start with the dessert because um, it needs to be uh, chilled to uh, the main dish a little bit. Um, I'll, I'll go as slow as I can. I won't go into kitchen mode. to help us out with this part of it. We're gonna get you right. Oh, okay. shoot, the camera's over there. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is the kind of the kid-friendly part. Um, we're gonna let them just jump right in, just rip handfuls of it, and then we're gonna put it into our little bake pan here. So Emma, you'll show us. You can just start taking little chunks. Yep. We can rip them a little, maybe about about that size is what we're looking for. 
And we're just gonna randomly throw them in there. It's a little sticky. Once we're out of camera, we'll let uh, let all the kids eat, lick their fingers. <laughs> yep, so you can, you can, don't be shy. You can just get right in there, grab a big old handful. Oh. You can kind of just. Just like that. Mm -hmm. Just tear it apart. It doesn't have to be really small. Yep. So we're just rip a little chunks. This is going to be the base of our dessert. So it's going to soak up some of the some of the goodness of the strawberries and everything. And, yep. Uh, no, that's the middle cone. You got all Emma? Oh, we do. Nice. We'll just discard that. Yep. So we're going to put that in. So Emma's nicely ripped up the angel food cake. Now we're going to. Oh, you're not done yet. No licking yet. <laughs> it's going to be the hardest part, holding off from licking the fingers. So then we're just going to no. gently just pat down. Smooshy. Yeah. You don't have to be too gentle. We want to, it will stick to your fingers a little bit. We want to make sure the base is evenly covered. So if you have to rip a few pieces and kind of fill it in. There we go. We're just. So we'll just smush it all in there. And that's a, that's a culinary term, smush. It's used, used a lot. How's that look, Emma? Good. We'll, I think. We'll put a little bit over there. Um, we just want to see, we, don't, we want to make sure we don't see any parts of the bottom right of the dish. Here. Right yeah. here I see a little bit. Okay, we'll just, we'll just rip a little piece off and we'll fill the hole. Okay. So there we have our ripped up angel food cake. And we have the bottom all covered. So that's what we're kind of looking for there. Now we can either wash or we can lick our hands, but. Lick our hands. So we'll just put the base aside. It's good for now. So now I'd like everyone to take out their cream cheese that's been at room temperature. So it's a little bit soft. Yep, we get to do this part too. Can you show me the bowl there? Nice. Okay. So does everyone have their cream cheese and everything out? Okay. We're going to start with a wooden spoon. If you have a mixer and you want to take the easier route, you can use a mixer and then you can whip it that way. We're going to go old school because we have children involved. So we need to wear them out a little bit. So we're going to start with a spoon. You just want to kind of smear the cream cheese around. I'll show you start first, Emma. I'll show you. So you can kind of take it into little chunks. We're just going to kind of cut it up. Just kind of want to scrape away. So it's just taking little bits. Then we're going to keep smearing. Now Emma's going to keep kind of smearing that around and it's working it in, softening it up before we get the whisk out. Yeah. Well, while I was doing that, I did forget to mention uh, when I, my very first chef trained me on. We're not going to follow the recipe exactly. A recipe is a guideline, um, so we're gonna we're not going to follow it exactly. If, if you like more, if you like garlic, we're going to add a little bit more garlic. If you like onion, you can add a little bit more garlic. The recipe is just a guideline to give you a base to start with. Now, if you love maple syrup and you put three cups in it, it will it will wreck the dish. But uh, so in moderation, we'll, we'll we'll loosen things up a little bit. So Annalise is going to add um, the one cup of sugar. Okay, you can put that in. We like sugar, don't we? Yeah, we're gonna eat all of it. Are you gonna mix? Yep. Okay. Give ourselves a little bit more because we need. That's probably a cup. Yep. So, if you, like I said, if you like it a little sweeter, we can add a little bit more sugar. Um, so cooking is, is a feel. So, you kind of want to, as we go, We'll, we'll be trying it, trying the dish out. We might add more salt. We might add more pepper, more basil, more mustard. Um, it's kind of a feel of how you want. Every ingredient's a little different. 
my asparagus might be a little bit riper, yours might not be. So we can just tweak things a little bit. Um, and yeah, we'll just have some fun with it and we'll all come out with a delicious dish. So Emma's mixing the, um, the sugar and the cream cheese together. So you, wanna, you wanna scrape the sides away and pull it into the center. Yep, just like this or so get those muscles in there and we can. Good. We just yes. want to keep, you can kind of smear it on the sides. What we're doing is just working the cream cheese to get some warmth into it to keep softening it up. So then when we get the whisk into it, it'll be a little bit easier to whisk. Yep. So just keep... Actually, got really surprisingly soft. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The more you work, the more you work the cream cheese, the softer it'll get, and it'll be easier to whip up. More sugar? Uh, nope, we're good on the Aww. sugar there. <laughs> <laughs> more sugar. Hopefully this part. Is this good? Um, yeah. I'll get in here real quick. How's everyone doing? Are we are we following along? Can, can I see? Uh, Jump in. You keep doing this. Can I see uh, how everyone's doing here? It looks like so far. Pretty mix. Mm -hmm. along pretty good here. It's really soft. So you think it's ready for the whisk yet, uh, sous chef Emma? Okay, we can't lick our fingers too much. We're cooking for ourselves, so we can. So here you're gonna to wanna to, you're gonna to wanna to take the whisk like this because it's gonna be a little thick. So we're gonna grab if you have a weaker whisk, you wanna grab a little bit lower. If you have a bit stiffer whisk, then you can grab a little higher. But now we're just gonna just start swirling around. And then every so often we'll grab a little bit from the side, plunk her into the middle. We'll put it in the middle again. We'll give her another coat. So Emma's gonna keep keep showing you how to do this. Okay. Let's put your muscles into it. So. Yeah. So as yeah as as Emma does that, we we'll, we'll move on. So keep whisk everyone keep whisking their uh, their cream cheese. We wanted a nice fluffy texture, um, nice and pliable. And we're going to move on to the strawberries. So we pre-rinsed our strawberries. Annalise is just rinsing them, uh, draining them off. Um, if nobody's rinsed their strawberries yet, you can just put them in a little bowl, fill them up with some water, just kind of agitate them with your hands, get any particles off of them. Is everyone got their, has their strawberries washed or? And if I'm moving too quick, just let me know. Do you want me to use this first? Either one. So then we'll put them into there. Uh, and then half of them. Yeah, so Annalise is going to um, start trimming the strawberries. What we're looking at doing is discarding any soft, soft ones. Um, and she's just trimming the greens off the top and then cutting them in half. Yes, that's looking good. Perfect. The knife technique that I zoom taught in, her is zoom in on her right now. To zoom in on her so left hand, Greg. We're gonna give a quick little safety uh, technique. When trimming or cutting onions or anything, you always want your fingers back and your knuckles up and your thumb tucked behind your fingers. So then we don't lose any fingertips. So you want them back, cut. So just a little safety tidbit. Safety first. Safety first. Okay, I think I'm done. I'll just use a spoon real quick. And mix like that. Perfect. Yeah, it was way softer than before. Mm. Mix something. Okay. So while we're doing this, um, if I could get 
one individual at everyone, everyone's group, if we could get the oven turned on to 400 degrees, we'll get that, uh, that cooking up right now. So we'll set your ovens to 400 degrees. And I'll do the same. Got it. Perfect. How's everyone making out? Good. Any questions or no questions? How's the mixing going in? Can I open yeah, this up to see if people get it? Mm -hmm. This is it so far. There's the only sugar added to the cream to the cheese. cream cheese mixture. Only sugar, nothing else? Uh, no, you can if you'd like to. You can add a little okay. bit of vanilla if you'd like. Okay, no, we're just double checking. Thank you. Yeah, so we're, uh, we're really letting the strawberries be the highlight. So uh, I didn't want to infuse any other flavors in. You can, you can add a little bit of um, maple into it if you'd like. Maple syrup, you can add vanilla. Um, we're just getting some. Uh, you can add any, any flavor you like into yeah. the cream cheese mixture as you whisk it and, and uh, soften it up. So you get as much batter as you can into the bowl. Mm -hmm. Here, I think that's as much as I can do. Let me make that. Sean, am I doing good? I'm trying to You're doing good. great. Okay, that's good. <laughs> okay, so. Got a little close to my knife there. Yeah. Done with this. And now I just need to get all. Oh, yeah, just going to do a little cruise through here and see how everyone's making out. I have to get all the batter on the side as possible mm -hmm. and put it into the middle. Yeah. And then if you yeah. I'm becoming an expert. I think. <laughs> not bad, Karen, not bad. <laughs> Are you getting tired? You can't use your fancy mixer. <laughs> oh, they're on mute. Oh. Yes. 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 Oh, there we are. We're cheating. We're using our mixer. Nah, it's all right. <laughs> I just wanted to tire the kids out a little bit, so I thought we'd hand do it. Hey, I'm okay with that. <laughs> okay. And they get to lick the spoon after. <gasps> Yay! Oh, not yet. Right on with you. Uh -huh. After, after. <laughs> Am I done? I'm done. I'm done. I think you're done for now. Get all the okay, papers like more and more every time we spin. Okay, there's a lot of batter. Has on anyone this. sampled their strawberries and uh, made sure they're nice and ripe and tasty? Can I try one to see? Goodness, yes. Everyone's very, very focused. I love how everyone's very focused on here. Oh, we're down here. Very good. Very good. Emma, Emma approves the strawberries. Mm. Emma, you can help me mm? by mm. looking if there's any rotten ones in there. Would you like to stick through? Yeah, if there's yeah. any ones that are kind of eh, kind of soft. Yeah, nope, nothing. No, oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> if there's any ones like like kind of like that. This like, this one's gross. Yeah, we won't use that one. Yeah, <laughs> so that one's just put it on my Emma. Yep, right there. Uh, this one's disgusting. So you eat it. I think. Hey, Bernie. <laughs> Hey Jade, hey Shannon. <laughs> some squishy. And we'll just say a big thanks again the to Red Farm Berries for you guys support in this event as well. I know a lot of you got your berries there, and that's terrific. They're going to be donating some money back uh, to the church, so thank you very much for that. A good one. I mean, what I'm doing is just I'm just putting my maybe, hands in. Maybe put those here, just so that you don't get in by my knife. I'm putting my hands in the bucket with all the strawberries. Are we all good? Yeah, they're all good. All right. Mm -hmm. This one is so fast. So maybe I'm going to use it. So as, as some of the people are cutting up some of the strawberries, you can get one of your sous chefs or mini sous chefs. As Annalise keeps chopping the strawberries, I'm just going to give one quick little whisk again.
we have our sugar and cream. Did I get some onion? We have our sugar and cream cheese mixture together there. And we just need this, make a big scoop and you're done. Yeah. One just second. Hold on a sec. So we're gonna take, now we're gonna take our, our whipped topping. We'll just take a big dollop. We're gonna yeah. add it in and then just gently fold, fold it. it in. It's the one chef yeah. room I know. <laughs> And the idea with just gently folding it is we don't want to lose the aeration of the um, of the whip topping. Then we can just keep adding. Can I cut one scoop? Yep. Do you want to put that scoop in there? Just drop it right in there and just slowly kind of move it around. You kind of want to take a, you want to kind of go like this. You want to take a big scoop full, fold it over. Okay. Take a big Thanks. scoop full, and you can kind of go around the edges, fold it, and then come through the center, fold it. Scoop full, fold it. Yeah. Big scoop full, fold it. She's almost got the berries done. What a girl, trooper. <laughs> so some of some of the berries we we've, we've chopped up. Um, we're gonna use some for the dessert, but we're gonna keep some aside for the main dish to go along with the chicken. All right, I'm done. So what we're doing right now is called mise en place. And it's basically meaning we're getting everything set up. So when it's cooking time, we just start grabbing handfuls of everything and we'll just, uh, we'll just create the dish. Sean, um, yes. Mm -hmm. Can yep. you put some rich cream cheese? Yep, we'll take, we'll take another dollop of the whipped topping. Okay. Yep. That should be pretty good. So what we're looking for is enough, enough of our cream cheese and whipped topping to cover our angel food cake. Um, if your tray is not deep enough, we can smush down a little bit more of our angel food because it will kind of puff back up a little bit. So we'll just keep pushing it down. Yep. We'll just, you can, Scrape the sides of your bowl, you'll have some cream cheese up there. So we'll, if ideally everyone should have a nice fluffy cream cheese and whipped topping mixture. Yes. Put, put just a little bit more in it. Yeah. Mm. You're gonna make it like a, like really, really soft. Like delicious. Softer than Play-Doh. Softer than, Emma says we were looking for a softer than Play-Doh texture. Yeah. It's so we are all going to go with our whipped topping. We'll take a little bit of our strawberries. So we're going to keep our two cups aside. I had a couple, I had a few pints of the strawberries. So we're going to actually take majority. We're going to leave two cups of strawberries aside for our chicken dish. And then we're going to take our strawberry syrup. We're just gonna squeeze all that in there. You wanna squeeze some? Mm. Perfect. If you want a little bit more saucy, you can add a little bit more of the uh, strawberry glaze. That, that's perfect. We're, we're gonna be nice and juicy. <laughs> 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 the, the, more, the more strawberry glaze you add, it's not a bad thing. The angel food cake will actually absorb quite a bit of it. Um, and it'll just, it'll be even more strawberry goodness. So we're just going to take our spoon. We just want to make sure we coat all the strawberries. How does it look in? Good. And if your strawberries aren't too ripe, which I can't imagine they are because they have beautiful berries out there and they're all nice and ripe. If, if you find they're not, uh, it might not be sweet enough for your liking. You can add a little bit of sugar at this time and kind of stir that in too. Um, no, I think we're good on the sugar. It's very sweet too. <laughs> yeah, you're going to pour it into the tray. But not yet. We need one more step here. Uh, one second. How's everyone making out? Is there everyone following along pretty good? Am I talking too quick, moving too quick? Got lots of thumbs up, John. Perfect. Any questions, fire them out. We'll do our best to answer them. If not, I'll just lie and make up an answer. <laughs> uh, nope, not yet. I did notice in the chat, just looking at the strawberries, Mark uh, 
made a message there that Red Barn donated fifty dollars back to the church. So thanks oh. very much, everybody, for buying those strawberries there. Oh. That's terrific. Let's pull the strawberries. So does everyone have their strawberries marinated in the strawberry glaze? You'll find that a bit of the juice from the strawberry kind of starts extracting, and it'll go mix <laughs> mix along with your um, with your glaze and everything. Yes, thank you. It's okay. You can lick stuff. We're, we're just cooking for ourselves. <laughs> so next, I want to take um, get your tray of uh, angel food cake all lined up. No, I know you really really want to do the strawberries. You have one step before that. So Emma's gonna spoon off the cream cheese and whipped topping. So you're gonna take a spoonful of that. Oh. Alexa, stop. Oh, we're getting a little tea going. So what you want to do is just. Pop a little bit down like there, maybe a little there. You know, we need to do that. Emma's going to show you how to do this part. So you're just taking a little bit of your whipped topping and cream cheese, and we're going to, you can put little piles everywhere else and that everywhere around on it. And you just pop it in one area. Yep. Like this one. Yep. And then just keep going. This is great. I'll do yep. So you just kind of do this if you want. You can just take your finger and go. Okay, so you get a big scoop. Put your finger out and then just. No, a couple fingers. You're gonna, you're, yep, there you go. <laughs> and then just try to get all of it. Yep, you want to clean the bowl and get her all scraped out. As possible. A bit over there, maybe. Perfect. Now I'll scrape off the rest because it gets a little stickier here. Then we just need to flatten them. So you just want to straighten your edges out. You clean your edges off, I mean. Yep. I'll, I'll start it and then you can follow in. If anyone wants a liquid bowl, you can leave a little bit extra in there. So I'm just going to finish it off, but we're just spreading the mixture so it covers all of the angel food cake. And don't see any of those little bread things. That's the angel food cake, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Annalise is tasting out the uh, cream cheese mixture. That's good. That is good. <laughs> Ready? Flat right now? Not bad, yeah. I'm just going to work this edge in. You can just spin your dish towards you, and then there you go. It'll be easier. Perfect. Be a lazy Susan in here. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Perfect. Okay. I'm just gonna finish it off just a little bit. So we're just evening it all out, making sure it's all in the corners. Okay. Your fingers. You can kind of just. There's no real true technique. You just want to make sure it's all level. You don't want any high spots. So you can kind of go back and forth, spin it. We're going to get the high edges down. There we go. There we have a nice flat, even coating. Now we'll just take our strawberries. First, we're going to Oh, yeah, that's yeah, I'm going to do a little bit here first and then join in. So we're just going to spoon out the strawberries first. We'll keep some of the liquid behind. So then if you like it juicy, you can add a little bit more liquid after. Yeah, there you go. And I'm just going to show you how to finish it off. Okay, big. Just pop it. My oven is hot. Does everyone have their ovens at 400? Did their bell, bell just go off? Mm -hmm. Thumbs up. Is the dessert coming in the oven, strawberries. Twig? Oh, twig? Is the, dessert going in the, is the dessert going in the oven? No, it's going to go in the refrigerator because it has to cool. Awesome. So this, this is a nice summer dish, no bake. So once we get all of our strawberries on it, we're going to pack it down a little bit. And then we're going to put in the refrigerator to cool, and then we'll move on to the main dish. That way, by the time dinner's done, the main dish is done, our dessert will be nice and chilled, and we can dig into it. Next time. Awesome. You're doing great. Doing great. Any strawberry. Beautiful. So, well, actually, we don't have a wolf. We like our saucy, right? Yeah. We can just 
plop. Oh, there we go. Let's there it we out. go. Spread it all around. You can just pour it into a bowl of strawberries. We want a nice even coating. You got it. Some of the net. Oh, we just need to do a couple more stuff. We just want to make sure we got, see how there's no strawberry here and no strawberries here. We got, there you go. Let's take a peek to see how everyone's making up. Look up here. Look at the camera. How are we all doing? Can you smile up here, buddy? Smile on it. Smile. You say. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Some of this stuff is coming. That's okay. Don't poke it around too much and then I'll stay. Yeah, back. I think it looks great. Yeah, it's in the fridge. Probably needs to go in the fridge. Yes. Perfect. Do we have saran? Uh, a little bit. Okay. Oh, perfect. perfect. So the lid goes on in and then we save that for later. Are you excited to eat it? No. Sure. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Go over to the sink. There, there you go. Go over to the sink. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So is everyone's strawberry mixture all done? We're just going to cover it up and we're going to leave it in the refrigerator now. Okay. There should be. The top shelf. We're going to just put it in the fridge there. We're done the dessert for now. There we go. It's nice to <laughs> all right all right perfect so our dessert is cooling the refrigerator is everyone uh is everyone all on the same page are we all um we good with the dessert yeah. all right so we'll go on to yeah i see some thumbs up people are head up. nodding right. i think we're good if anyone's not up Caught up with us, just give a scream and we'll uh we'll slow her down a little bit. But if everyone can get their bacon out and their sheet pan, we're gonna take our sheet pan and just line it with a little bit of parchment paper. Parchment paper. Oh, thank you. So So what we're doing right now is we're going to get the bacon going for our warm potato salad. And then we're going to use some bacon in our cast iron pans for to cook our chicken off in. So, so you just use parchment there to line your sheet pan, yeah. right? Yeah, okay. just a little parchment. Um, just keeps it from sticking. Uh, so if you don't have parchment paper, you can put it directly onto your, uh, your bake sheet. It's not a problem. So should, this be a little bit more cleaning up. Should they spray it or? Um, no, it should, nope, no, because the bacon will have enough fat in it. So, yeah, um, true. It'll, it'll be okay. Okay. So once again, the recipe is a guideline. So if you're a bacon lover, which most of us are, you can put a little bit more bacon in your warm potato salad. I'm going to put six strips in, uh, eight, eight strips we're gonna do. <laughs> so we're just gonna yes, we do. just put the bacon nice and close to each other, lay them out flat. <laughs> I'm using a nice thick cut uh, bacon. You can use any kind of bacon you'd like. Uh, double smoked maple goes well with it. We're just using a straight up. I personally like a little bit of extra pepper. So I think we're going to add a little bit of pepper to our bacon. Yep. Yeah. Emma's going to grind some fresh pepper on top. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, I'll just hit it with a little bit more. I don't like too much. Okay. But you didn't want to eat the potato salad. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I want bacon. Oh, uh, no. the, the, the pepper you don't have to put on if you don't like. 
Uh, we all like pepper. Not ammo, apparently. Mostly. Yeah. <laughs> so we're just going to take our bacon, nicely flat on a uh, bake sheet, and we're just going to put it in our 400 degree oven. Middle rack. And then we're going to let that set aside. Yeah, so, icing on your face. Nope. Oh, there we go. So we're going to go back to our bacon again. I'm using cast iron pans. Um, I love to cook on cast iron pans. If you're just using normal pans, uh, it's, it's just as good. Um, if you are using cast, We'll get them just, no, just on very on low, slightly warming up. We'll start getting our bacon going. Um, this is now we're on to the chicken, the chicken dish. So once again, if you like bacon, you can add a little bit more. I'm gonna use six, six slices again. So what we're gonna do is cut what they call a lardon. So it's a thin little strip of bacon. We're gonna line all, all of our bacon up. Preferably if you left in the refrigerator uh, up until now, it'll be nice and firm. Um, and then we're just gonna take our knife and we're just gonna cut little, little lard on. So about a quarter inch thick. See the safe knife, knife technique in action. Yeah, fingers back. <laughs> what I'm doing here is actually running the knife along my knuckle. A, it lets you have a consistent cut so all your, your cuts are nice and consistent with each other. And B, you won't cut off a fingertip. So my chef once told me that it's better to cut off a knuckle than it is a fingertip. Lots of lots of bacon actually. Yeah. That side. So we're just gonna take our bacon and put it into our pan here. So what we're going to do here now is what they call rendering the bacon down. So if we want our heat on medium low, because we're gonna slowly render the fats out of the bacon, and all that fattiness of the bacon will kind of become will melt down and then we'll be left with a little crispy lard on, which will add a nice little texture to our uh, to our chicken dish and in the oven in the oven we're doing a speed way i guess of um of making bacon bits by cooking them flat out and in a 400 degree oven we'll cook them in less time uh it'll still turn out nice and crispy and be rendered and then we'll chop them after and then add it um with the potato dish everything's kind of all cooked ahead of time and then we're bringing all the components together and then grating the dish that yes do you have a little bacon thing? Well, once they're cooked, yes. And I only want bacon. Okay. <laughs> and if you have a bacon lover like we do in the group, cook a little bit extra, extra off because we have now been requested that someone might want to snack on some of the bacon. <laughs> Perfect. So that's going there. Uh, what we'll do next is we're going to take our little roasted potatoes. So I, I, on the recipe, I have many roasted redskins. We just have a little, um, little mixture of redskins, purples, as uh, long as they're minis is all that matters. Annalise is going to uh, chop these up for us. So what we want, if they're round, it doesn't matter if they're, if they're oblong like that, then we just want to cut them lengthwise. We'll just drop them onto our tray. Sorry, let me miss that. These, this so those are round, so round it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. Oh, you can just I cut them in yeah. So long ones, yeah. Um, I haven't really perfected the knuckle technique. Yeah. So I'm just going to do my very own technique here. <laughs> no, I don't want to do their own technique. Just make sure you have lots of bandages. Bandages. <laughs> I kind of like go right, you know. There you go. Beautiful technique. Thank you. So as we're cutting our potatoes, we have to keep an eye on our bacon that's rendering in the pan and our bacon in the oven. Um, the bacon in the oven will take a little bit to cook, um, but the last few minutes is when it'll cook the quickest. So that's when we'll have to start paying attention to it more. Um, with your lardons in the, um, in the fry pan, where you can, Move them around a little bit, but you can let them sit a little bit. They'll get a little bit of crispiness. We'll stir them around. We're on very low heat, so it's not going to get out of hand too quickly. Um, but we just have to multitask. So if you have multiple people cooking 
Somebody could be cooking the potatoes, somebody could be washing the bacon, and we'll get things rolling that way. Thank you. Oh, someone's getting away. I'm going to pass me the rest of them. Almost done. We need them quick. All right, thank you. How's everyone making it out? Good. I'm grabbing my water. Okay, those are done. Perfect. So now we have our potatoes chopped. We're going to take a little bit of olive oil. Uh, all for the olive oil. Right? You can do the mixing. So we're just going to kind of drizzle some olive oil over top. And mix, and mix, mix. Oh, you can use your hands in this. Oh. So I'm just going to show you. We're just going to toss our potatoes in the olive oil so they're nicely coated. Ideally, you want all the potatoes to be coated nicely in olive oil so they cook evenly. Perfect. That's perfect. Nice. So then we're going to add a little bit of salt. Mix yep, mix that up. And as Emma's mixing, I'm going to add a little bit of pepper. And this wasn't on the recipe, but if you have some herbs that you like, at this point, you can add different kinds of herbs. Um, I'm just going to take a little bit of time and just sprinkle it over top. You can use you can use whatever herb you like. Um, a little rosemary if you like rosemary. You can just add a little bit to it. This is where how I said that the recipe is just a guideline. You can add different different flavors um, to, to work along with everything. I can see people busy in their kitchens. That's for sure. I like it. Mm -hmm. All right, that's perfect. Emma. Every single one needs to be professional. Perfect. I'm gonna get a couple of soups in my hand. Yep, that's great. So I'm gonna jump in here for a second now. Do you need a towel? Okay. So now we just wanna make sure our potatoes, if we can, if we can get a little bit of picky, Chef and me will come out here. If we can put all the cut sides down, so what this is going to do is it's going to create a crust on the cut side. So it'll just add a little bit of texture to the potato. So this textures is, is a component or is a big thing with dishes. You want crunchies, creamies, um, softs. You want a little bit of everything in there. So this will just give us, we're gonna let them cook majority of the way through with the skin or the cut side down. And that'll get a nice skin on it. And then we'll start tossing them around once we put them into the, um, the pan with the, uh, with the bacon and onions and sour cream and all that goodness. So we'll just stick that into the oven. So we have our bacon cooking. We have our, um, our potatoes in there. We have our potatoes or our bacon cooking on the top. We're slowly rendering down. I'm just gonna give them a little bit of stir. Our heat's a little low, so we're just going to bring it up a bit. What heat do you got there, Sean? Uh, we are a just shy, but a medium, closer to the medium than we are low. So medium low, but closer on the medium side. Okay. The higher the heat you go, the more you're going to have to stir it. Now, if we go too high a heat when we're cooking our bacon down, you'll have a crispy lard on, but it'll be a lot fattier. So the lower temperature you go and the longer you do it, um, the less fat you'll have in it. Um, and the more meat you'll have, um, it's still, still nice flavors, it's just different textures that people like. Some people like it a little bit fattier, some don't. So we have that going. Bacon's done. So now we'll get some mise en place going. So this part here. So we're gonna get some things ready for while well, well, the bacon's cooking. We're not quite ready for the chicken yet. So we'll take our jalapeno. If you don't like spicy food, you can leave the jalapeno out. It's not a problem. If you like spicy food, if you like really spicy food, you can leave. Um, if you like really spicy food, we can leave the seeds in it, 
and it'll just make a little bit hotter. We're gonna go a little bit less spicy. So we're gonna cut the jalapeno in half. We're gonna quarter it. Then we're just gonna take your knife and run it right down the membrane. And we're gonna take the seeds off. If there's any little seeds on there, we can just kind of put them over. Now, every jalapeno will have a different heat consistency. So Annalise is going to let us know how hot these ones are. And she's going to try a little bit. Uh, for real? Yeah. Okay. No, no. No more spicy one. So we're just going to take just a little sliver. So the riper they are, the hotter they'll be. Um, so that's, that's where a recipe. That's not really hot. Okay, so our jalapeno isn't too hot. So that's where I say I've been training on a recipe is just a guideline. It's then called for a whole jalapeno in the recipe. If we use a whole, just presume everyone's the same, we put one in. Some people, people's dishes might burn their mouth off. Some people might not even have that much heat. So that's where you always try a little bit of, um, you try a little bit of, uh, of the ingredient and then you can get a feel for it. So ours aren't too hot. Got a rogue chef over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you, you can keep stirring that. That's okay. Oh, well. We can put the, we'll put the whole thing in. Yeah. So what we're going to do now, though, is just called a, um, what's it called? Uh, it's called a brunoise. So you're going to take your jalapeno, and you're going to cut little strips lengthwise. Ideally, you want them nice and even. So we have a little strip there. We're just going to do that with every quarter. So there's different kinds of cuts. There's brunoise, there's dice. What we're doing is a brunoise. It can be a fine brunoise, it can be a medium, large. We're doing, we're going to go with a more fine brunoise. So what it means basically is you should have perfectly little squares. So we have all of our jalapeno strips all nice and evenly cut. Now we're gonna take it, we're gonna keep our finger, our finger tips back. A rocking motion. We're going to slide the knife back. Occasionally, you got to regroup. When you get near the end, it's a little trickier, so you just got to slow down a little bit. So what we have here is a nice, nice even squares, I guess you would call them. So what's the difference between that and julienne? So julienne is what we did first. Um, so actually by cutting them in the strips is technically called a julienne. Okay. Plus thin little strips. Then you can turn them around and then you can use, uh, make them into a brunoise. If you do a thick julienne, then you can make them into a dice, uh, which I'll show you with the onion, how we're going to dice it. So you can dice an onion rather quickly. So we're just going to put our jalapeno off to our side here. Actually, we will do that next. We a little smaller. So next, we're gonna dice up our onions. So you have, I have a red onion. You can use white onion. Um, it all depends on your flavors. We're just gonna cut off each end. Oops, Laura. It's okay. Okay. Um, is, is everyone up? Oh. Does everyone have their jalapeno cut? Might want yeah. to get. Yeah, it's the time. Yeah. It's hard to get it in a chef mode. <laughs> yeah, we'll give them a minute here. How's everyone doing? Okay. Oh, I heard it good. It's off good. Is everyone on board with the jalapeno and we have a nice fine brunoise? So we're keeping an eye on our bacon. Mm -hmm. Everyone should start seeing a little bit of brown coming out of their bacon now, too, if we get a little stir around. We just have a slight brown one right now. 
But as you can see, we have a lot of the bacon fat coming out of the bottom there. And that's what we want. And then we'll check our oven here. The potatoes are doing good. Our bacon's doing pretty good there. We have some sizzling going. Mm. Like deep bubbling. Oh yeah. It's starting to smell good. It's starting to smell good in everyone's house. We got some good smells. Oh, Emma's gonna come over just do a little stir here. Pretty good. You want to get all that bacon? Yeah. Yeah. We want to keep it nicely even across the pan, though, right, Emma? Make it all flat. Yeah. So every, every, if you bunch all your bacon up and do a pile, you'll have some crispy pieces and you'll have some that are just kind of sweaty and soft. So you always want to keep your lard almonds nice and flat. So basically the same technique that we're doing in the pan, we're doing in the oven on a bake sheet. We have nice flat pieces of bacon. They're going to get a nice crust on each side. We're basically doing the same thing with the lard almonds in the pan. Good job, Emma. Um... So we good? We can go on to the onion now. Yep. So what I've done is just trimmed off a little bit of the top, a little bit of the root end. You can see the root end here. We're going to cut it in half. We're going to peel off that little bit of skin on the outside. There we go. So we're gonna take going to take the root end. I'm a little I'm gonna square off my end. Apparently I had a little bit of crooked. So we're going to take the root end, which is here. We're gonna put that down on your cutting board. We're going to go three quarters of the way through the onion to make multiple cuts, about a quarter inch thick. So what we're doing here is doing a dice. So it's a quick way to dice up an onion. So we have all of our cuts coming down towards the core and why we're putting the core on the bottom is because it holds your onion together. If you did it on the other way, when you did your three quarter cut, your onion would fall apart. So now we're going to set it down this way and three quarters in again, we're gonna make quarter inch cuts this way. So there we go. So we have them cut this way. We have them cut this way. We're now going to spin it. And once again, another quarter inch. So by doing that, we have a nice, once again, perfect little squares. The reason we want nice, even squares and everything, so then it all cooks evenly. If we have big chunks and little chunks, when you go to cook, make your dish, you'll have some raw onion, you'll have some onion that's overcooked. So we'll, that's why we want the consistency of everything being the same. Once you get down to the end, it gets a little bit tricky and that's where our three quarter cut went. We're gonna plop the onion down. We're gonna cut against this. So the circles are running this way right now, we're cutting against them. And then we'll just come back this way quarter inch apart. And there My we go. dad doesn't like onion. What's a good substitute? There we have nice, nice even. Uh, nope, bacon's doing good. There we have a nice, nice medium dice for our onion. So we're just gonna put this aside. So once again, what we're doing is our mise en place. So, we're just making sure everything's all, well, some things are cooking. For sure. Oh, she's just doing a little check on the cuts. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Over here. Um, so we're just going to use a half onion. Actually, no, we'll do the whole onion. Once again, we're just coming down three quarters of the way. We'll drop down. We'll spin it this way. So now our cuts are going this way.
So now we've come this way. So we have this way, this way. I'm gonna spin it. And there we go. We'll actually do one more cut here because we haven't hit our line. Mm -hmm. We'll drop it down. We're gonna go one, two, three. Spin, one, two. Are good? Perfect. There we go. We're just going to slide these over to here. So next, we're going to do the very same. Well, actually, we're going to switch it up. We'll do a little, uh, we're going to switch up the shallots. So the shallots are now for your potato side dish. So a red onion or onion, whatever kind of onion it has for the chicken. Once again, we're just going to take the top and bottom off your shallot. What's the main difference between shallots and onions? Um, it's in the onion family, it's just less. Um, so all the different onions have different potency. So the red onion's got a nice little kick to it. Mm -hmm. Spanish onion is a little bit sweeter. White's a little bit sweeter. Vidalia is sweeter. Um, shallots a little, um, it's more like a baby onion in a way. Um, so it's just a little less potent. Okay. Um, so if you want, some dishes you want that onion flavor to pull through. Like if you're doing like red meats and stuff like that, it can hold up with a stronger onion. Mm -hmm. um, we are using bacon for this dish, um, uh, but we're not, the onion is just kind of a side infusion to it. That's yep. why we, we don't mind the shallots. Just curious. Yep. Yeah. And then green onions, very, very mild. Um, Cause a lot of the times on the green onions, you use the green part and not the white. So then we'll save the whites and use them for a stock or something like that. Um, so Annalise is gonna come in and show you how to do the shallot. You remember we tried this before, right? Yeah. And then... You can't just sit on the <laughs> sidelines. I am a little worried about the bacon. Though. Emma's all over the bacon. She will not bring the bacon because she loves bacon. Mm -hmm. All right. So what we're going to do... Yeah, you remember. Oh, it's coming back to me now. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> you, we're just doing this nice little thin... thin cut. So what we've done is we've taken the shell off, the, uh, the skin off the onion, the shell. We've cut it in half. Now we're just going to make little, about an eighth of an inch thick. <laughs> and Elise is going to show you how to consistently a, cut. I an have eighth tried of an this inch. before. That like chef thing. It's not. See, this so, is this is how I do it. So she's not using the rocking motion of the knife. Like this. You want to rock it. So you want to. I'm rocking it now, right? Yeah. So you want to push out. Am I the back, only one out, that back, is out, fine? back, out, back, out, like, back. So. So the older the onion, the more it'll make you cry. Or if you're just sensitive. <laughs> so did you see that? So you're gonna go with me. So get your shell. Okay. So we're gonna pull up, down and out, up, and then over. And we're making a rocking motion. So you're always keeping your tip on the ground. Your tip. Okay. And you're pulling back, down, and out, up. We're using, see, that's where I'm using this part, which we will judge. Okay, yeah, mine are not even like this. Yeah. So I'm also, uh, yeah. like, I'm completely crying <laughs> from the onions. I heard a trick that if you put a paper towel beside you or something, then oh, it absorbs the, the onion or the first, and then before it can get to you. Oh, really? So we are... The closest thing absorbs it. I think this is why I also don't like red onions. Well. How is there, how is, as Annalise keeps cutting those up sporadically, um, how's everyone's uh, Lord Owens doing? Because ours are all cooked. So we're actually, see how they're nice, crispy. We have, Look at all the fat we have that's rendered off. We're actually just going to take this off. We'll put this in a bowl over here. So they're nice, crispy, still a little bit of juice in them. How's it look, Anne? Are you kind of the supervisor now? There we go, there, perfect. 
So we're just gonna strain a little bit of our bacon fat off. We wanna keep about, about a tablespoon of it. So we're gonna keep the, the pan that you cooked your bacon in. We've now taken the bacon out. We've strained three quarters of the, the fat off, depending on your bacon, there might be more. We've kept one tablespoon in the pan. We're just gonna, that's on extremely low, so let's let it sit there. And we'll check our bacon strips and our potatoes. So just to check them, we just stick a knife in them. We are almost cooked there. We're, about, we're al dente, which means there's a little bit of, a little bit of toughness in the center. So we're gonna let them go a little longer. Our bacon strips will pull out and we're just going to flip them over. So if you have little tongs, we'll just flip them over. See how the one side has a nice little color to it. The other side's a little bit of pale. So the pale side's been actually poaching in the bacon fat a little bit. So that's why we want to flip it over, get a little bit of color on the other side. There we go. And we'll just stick that back in the oven. Our potatoes are coming along nicely. Can you check my shallots? Oh, we'll head back over and we'll see how Emily's did on her shallots. So it's, she, she's done pretty good. Um, we'd call this more of a rustic cut, which means <laughs> you have different sizes. <laughs> hey, Country Annalise. Uh, Annalise, that's the... Uh, that's the critique I always used to get too, so I feel your pain. Oh, thank you, Carla. <laughs> just really hard. Yeah, I'd be like, no, you need to hold the knife this way. <laughs> All right, so we have our red onion cut, we have our shallots cut, we have our jalapeno cut. I'm just gonna do, as our, our bacon's still cooking, so we have a little bit of time. So it calls for two cloves of garlic. We all like garlic, so we're going to use three. I've used five. Five? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love garlic. I could eat it all day. So we're actually going to, so what we're going to do is just take off each end again. And Annalise will show you how to just skin it. You just skin it. Skin them. So I'm going to show you a couple different quick techniques on how to chop garlic. Different dishes call for different things or different, different ways, different techniques. So we'll start off with one clove. We're going to take, what we're going to do is just, you can just rough chop it. So what we're going to do is a minced garlic here. So I'm just cutting little, little rondelles. There's no technique to this. You can cut it this way, that way. Just cut it down to small little chunks. So once we have our small little chunks, this is where we're going to make minced garlic. So if you want minced garlic, which will infuse a lot more, um, you'll get more garlicness flavor out of your dish. You take a little bit of kosher salt, we're using a, a coarse sea salt. Just crack a little bit on top. We'll take a little bit of olive oil, pour that over top. And what you're gonna do is take your knife, and it's going to be on an, on an angle, blade side in, and you're gonna push down and out. We're just going to do a little, you're just kind of rocking it back and forth, back and forth. And this is how you do a quick minced garlic. If you have those minced garlic presses, throw them out the door and do it this way. You'll have a, you'll have a better flavor. Um, there are people who say that the different ways you cut garlic, you will get different flavors out of it. Um, and then you can just, so I just scooped it up. The more you mince it, the more of a paste it will make. Hmm. That's so really what cool. happens is the, the salt acts as the coarse kind of uh, abrasiveness. So within a minute there, we have a nice, beautiful garlic paste. That's really cool. So that's one way that you can do it. So we'll just put that over there. We can go back to, if you want to get real picky, or we can go how we did our shallot. We'll do a little cut there, a little cut there. We'll flip it over. Little cut, little cut. Then we'll just do a, a very fine brunoise. So 
there we have just nice little fine Brunoise, little chunks. Or if you want, we can just do straight up rondelles. Or garlic chips, I guess. So the different ways when, so our minced garlic will incorporate it in the dish. So every spoonful of your dish will have a nice even garlicness to it. The chunk, you might have a bite here and a bite there that is a little bit more garlicky, some a little bit less. The rondelles, when you have, when you take a spoonful, you might have no garlic, you might have a punch of garlic. So it all depends on, on how you'd like to do it. Um, normally I either go with the small dice or, um, or small fine brunoise or the um, puree um, minced garlic. We have that last. We're gonna show them how to do the asparagus. So we have our oven going. We're just gonna get our asparagus ready. So the best way for asparagus is as a natural spot where it wants to snap. So there's a woody part that you don't want to eat and there's a beautiful piece of asparagus you want. So just grab it at each end and snap. Where it snaps is where you want the nut divides it, the not eating part. And so you can do that. You can grab multiple ones. So asparagus that doesn't have as much purple, is that just riper then? Uh, sometimes just, there's... Could, could just be different strains too. Okay. You can keep doing that. What's the difference between white and... Uh, textures and flavors. So white is very, very delicate. Um, it's a very delicate flavor. So you'd want to poach it or like more gentle cooking with it. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, it's the very it's similar textures and stuff like that. It's just a more lighter, lighter uh, flavor um, than your normal. Uncle Twiggy. Yeah. Yellow. Well, this way just okay. naturally Great snaps. So it wants to. Some will be a little bit longer, some will be a little shorter. Most likely, Twig. the bunch of asparagus you have will all snap at the same spot. Twig? Yes. Okay, now you can ask him. Um, do Sorry. we have to flip our potatoes? No, we're going we're gonna to cook them as long as we can, skin side or cut side down, because we want a little bit of a crispy edge on that potato. Okay. All right. So if you open, if you open up your oven and look at them, we might uh, we might be close. Dad said they're too cooked. And what's a good substitute for onions? He doesn't, he doesn't like them apparently. Oh, oh he's just quiet. giving Uncle Twiggy a hard time. What did Dad say? <laughs> he said he doesn't like onions. He's such a liar. Yeah, <laughs> he didn't like mushrooms at one point, but he's eating them now. True. <laughs> True. <Yeah. laughs> you just you tell your dad just enjoy his beer in the background. <laughs> <laughs> that is what he's doing. Okay, so Annalise has now cut the asparagus. We're just going to lay them all out nice and even. We're going to pour a little bit of olive oil on top. And then we have our cherry tomatoes, which we're just going to keep whole. So the reason cherry tomatoes go well with it is A, the acidity, which helps out the asparagus, the sweetness of it, and B, they cook at the same temperature too. So our asparagus, we're gonna have like an al dente, a little bit of crispness on the inside. And our cherry tomatoes will have a nice little, hopefully a little bit of char maybe to them. Uh, they won't be fully mushy. They'll still be able to have a little bit of um, firmness to them. So a little bit of salt and pepper. Once again, if you if you like pepper, you can crack a lot of pepper on it. Oh, no more salt. And then we're just gonna mix. You wanna keep the asparagus in the same area, but you just wanna kind of roll them around so that they're all nicely coated. We're gonna hit our cherry tomatoes with a little bit of olive oil. We're just gonna massage the tomatoes around so they're nicely coated in olive oil your salt, your pepper. So we have that. We're just gonna set that aside now because this, this will only take roughly five minutes to cook in the 500 degree oven. So we're just, we have it all ready to go now. So we'll set that off to the side. For those who are still just catching up there a yep. little bit, I'm just gonna show you again the, the final tray, what it looks like. So lots of olive oil spread across the asparagus and the cherry tomatoes. And just kind of toss there together with some salt and pepper. All right. 
basement. All right, so we're gonna head on to the chicken. So we have our pan that we cooked our bacon in. There's some nice little crumbs and we have that about a tablespoon of bacon fat in it. We're just gonna make sure our pan's all coated. It. It's hot. So we're gonna get our heat going up to about medium, medium high. So if you have a cast iron pan, it's gonna take a little bit longer to get up hot. Ours is still pretty warm, I guess, so it won't take too long. If you have your normal pan, we'll just get her warming up right now. No olive oil or anything for I guess, in it because we have our bacon fat. As that's warming up, we have our chicken. We're just gonna season. So all, you always wanna season every, every part, every dish of your, or ingredient of your dish. But it all comes together. Because if you season the chicken, we don't season, let's say the asparagus, or nicely seasoned chicken, the asparagus will take some of that seasoning away and it might not be seasoned nicely. So we want just a little bit cooling. It might look like I'm doing a little bit too much salt here, but as we pan sear it, you're gonna lose a lot of that salt off and it's gonna go, it's gonna drop off. So even when I'm cooking steaks, I season them even heavier. It almost looks like it's salt crusted. By the time you put it on a barbecue, by the time you put it in your cast iron pan, a lot of that salt falls off. By the time it hits the plate, it's perfectly seasoned. It was baffling when I was trained with my sous chef, he'd always say more salt, more salt, pamphlets on it. But come to find out near the end, uh, yeah, it, it balances off nicely. So we'll just hold our hand over. You see a little bit of smoke coming up. We have a couple seconds, it's feeling nice and toasty. We're gonna take our chicken. So our pan, we get three in. So you want to hear that nice sizzle. Um, if you don't hear the sizzle, your pan's not hot enough. So actually, when you put your chicken in, if you just touch the tail, the tip of the chicken in, if it doesn't sizzle, just give your pan a little bit more. If you don't put your pan into a very hot pan, you're not going to get a nice caramelization. Because when we put our, our meat in a pan, it, drop the temperature down. So we want our temperature always a little bit higher than our cooking temp, and then it'll drop it out and bring it down. Now I, I only season one side. So we're just gonna quickly season the other side. What do we do with the potatoes uh -huh. when they're cooked? Yeah, can you on the John? Sean, hey, twig. What do we do with the potatoes when they're cooked? How's everyone making out? I don't think you can hear us. Any questions or? Yes. What do we do with the potatoes when they're cooked? So we have our bacon in our oven, we have our potatoes in our oven. Our bacon is coming along quite nicely, it's not too far off. I don't think you can hear it. We just put our chicken in the pan, we haven't touched it yet, we're just going to leave it there. Um, some chefs prefer to move it around with cast iron you can. Some chefs say put your meat in and leave it, but here, different pans have different hot spots. So after we've been only doing a minute in there, we're just, we are, I, I like to move my meat around a little bit. Sean, we have a question. Yeah. What do we do with the potatoes if they're fully cooked? Oh, we can remove them from the oven. Yeah. Okay. Take them so. off and just put them on the side. Put them on the side. Take them off and put them on the side. Hendrika, did you hear that okay? So if your potatoes are fully cooked for anybody out there. Yep. Well, they're going to put them off the side. Cause what we're going to do is, uh, like you can even, Cook your, if you're going to do this just again, you can cook your potatoes off the morning of because we're going to put them into a pan and we eat them anyways. Um, the way we're doing it here is the quicker way, so our potatoes are already hot, so it'll take less time in the pan. Um, but you can do a lot of this ahead of time because we're going to be bringing the temp back up. So, like your, your asparagus and everything, you're going to have straight up. So, when your company comes, you're just putting stuff into the oven. Um, your chicken, you'll want to leave in the last minute. Um, or what you do. 
if you want to, if you have a big party coming over, you'll know. we'll park up your chicken. So what, by, what I mean by that is we'll tear it off. We'll flip it over, we'll tear it off the other side. It'll be about a medium temp. We'll pull the chicken aside. We'll make our sauce and everything. You have that aside. And then when your company comes over, 45 minutes before, you get your oven going. You put your chicken into a bake sheet, put your sauce over top, into an oven for about 350 degrees for about 20 minutes, 30 minutes. You'll actually finish cooking it through, and you'll have a meal that normally takes you an hour and a half cooked in, in 30 minutes. Kind of thing. So we're just going to check our chicken here. So we, we have a nice little color. Can you that again? Yeah, and see, yeah, this is a good example. So this one, cooking with this pan cast iron, the heat's different. So we actually have a nice caramelization going on that one. Yeah, that's the one over here, we have half caramelized. That's where we're going to spin it around. And this one over here caramelized. So we're actually going to advance here. We're going to move this one over the hot section. See, this one's done. That one back down. So we're still on the one side cooking. We want My to on the presentation side. Uh, a lot of your flavor from your meat is from your crust. So the better the sear you have, the more color you have, the more flavor you'll get in the end of it. We're going to keep cooking those on the one side. We've been roughly three, four minutes, I believe, right now. Uh, we're going to let them keep going. We're still at medium high heat. We got good sizzle. Our potatoes are cooked. Our bacon is our bacon is pretty much cooked. So that's a if you're ever doing cooking breakfast for a lot of people, if you do your bacon like this and put it on a bake sheet on parchment paper, the day before you can have it all lined up and in the refrigerator the day at the morning of you take your pan full of bacon, throw it in the oven, and you have you can cook pounds of bacon off easily within 20, 30 minutes, kind of thing. Easy way of cooking for large crowds. Okay, so we have a nice little, nice little color. So we're going to flip ours over. Paper towel on our plate. So we're going to remove the chicken on it. And I'm going to put it on the paper towel to kind of dry off a little bit. Is that the potatoes are done? I'm actually going to shut off the oven. Okay, and I'm going to leave the door shut. Um, but I'll keep it warm. We're going to make it good. Okay, so we're going to We're just developing a little bit of sear on the other side right now. If you, if you find your pan getting a little bit dry, you can take a little bit of the bacon fat that we had and just add that to it. Oh, I hope so. So if you want a little bit of lubricant in your pan, if it gets too dry, a little bit of bacon fat or a little bit of olive oil if you happen to throw your bacon fat away. Um, you just want to keep that. The fat, the olive oil, the bacon fat will just help with your sear. Kind of giving you a nice little coating, even when you cook the, uh, the chicken. So for our mustard, we're going to the classic Dijon. Um, and then I'm actually going with a triple crunch. Um, it just, it's, it's not as mustardy, but once again, it's a texture issue. Uh, it'll add a little. It'll got both those grains too. It just got now. Probably about a medium cook. You can kind of still see some pink in there. We're just going to take our chicken out. So it must be parchment paper. Go over on a little paper towel. We're going to set that aside. So now, what we're going to do is make our sauce. We have our hot pan with all our, you can see all of our little. Wilma, can you please mute yourself? Oh, thank you. So we have all these good little crispy bits on the bottom. Just pull my pan off a little bit because it's quite hot. So this is where we're going to add our balsamic. I believe it's two tablespoons. 
keep stand away when you add your vinegar. If you take a deep breath when you put it in there, it will be a little bit overwhelming. We're just going to stir it around a little bit. What we're doing here is deglazing the pan. So we're actually all those crispy little bits I showed you are, are coming off now. But if you breathe in while it's in there, it will take your breath away. We're going to hit it with a little bit of soy sauce. I believe two tablespoons too. We're just going to one, two. Once your soy sauce is in there, we're just going to keep scraping all that little goodness off the bottom. And leave to drop in the strawberries. Now we have our strawberries. I just took my pan off the heat because the cast iron is really hot. So I just wanted to cool it down a little bit. So we have all of our little bits off, our balsamic in there, our soy in there. We're going to now, as we put the, the room temperature strawberries in, they're actually going to, when they hit the hot pan, they're going to extract a lot of their moisture. So we're gonna keep scraping the bottom of the pan because that's gonna help deglaze the pan. And what we're doing is getting all those crispy little chicken bits off the bottom. And we're going to take our onion. Once again, the more you like, I'm taking about a cup full. And what's going to happen again, just like the strawberries, our onions are going to start sweating off too and create a little bit of a juice. So Sean, just for a moment. Yep. Um, so the, originally you put the strawberries in, right? Yep. And now you've added the red onion. Yep. Just to catch, help people just catching yep. up. So. so what we're doing, yeah. So we're sweating off the strawberries, sweating off the onions, we're releasing that moisture, and then we're deglazing the pan. So right now we have our balsamic in there, our soy sauce in there, our onions in there, and our um, strawberries in there. All that juice is extracting, and we're going to keep scraping the bottom. So now, when I first showed, we had all those crispy bits on the bottom. Now we have none, and that's all in our sauce here. So as we cook this, the strawberries are releasing that moisture, and the onions are releasing the moisture. We're going to keep our heat at a medium high. We want to reduce that, um, that strawberry liquid and that onion liquid down a little bit. And we want our onions to be um, like an opaque color. So a couple of minutes in there, they'll actually soften up. By cooking an onion, you're, you're reducing the onion, like the potent onion flavor. It's becoming a little bit sweeter. Um, you get a more delicate flavor. You can see we have quite a bit of sauce in there. When we added the balsamic, it really, really dried up. The soy really dried up. Now we have a nice, the onions are slightly, Get a little opaque, not as wet as they were. Strawberries are nice and soft. Does the meat have to be when, completely cooked oh, when you take it out of the pan? What was that quick? Pardon? Does, does the meat have to be completely cooked when you take it from the pan? No, we're at about a medium, but a medium cook. Because we're okay. gonna add it back to the sauce here and finish off the cook. Thank you. If it is fully cooked, it's not a bad thing. Cooking it in the sauce will, will still keep it juicy, but we're aiming for that medium, medium well. So right now we have a nice amount of nice amount of juice in there. The onions are a nice opaque color. Oh, we're gonna add our garlic now. So here's where we're gonna add our garlic. The reason we're keeping our garlic to the till the oh till the end. Um, our garlic till the end. If you put the garlic in too soon, you'll just burn the garlic. We want nice, be nice and juicy still. I'm just gonna stir that around. We like garlic, so we might add a little bit more. How's everyone making out? Look, we're all on the same page making the sauce. And... Now we're gonna add a dollop of a mushroom. 
or mustard. So it calls for about two tablespoons. What the mustard is going to do is, so our sauce is quite loose right now. By loose, I mean it's quite liquidy. A mustard is a binding agent, so it'll actually help bring so two tablespoons. It'll actually help make the sauce a little bit thicker. We just had a question if the shallots have been put in yet. Uh, shallots are going in the potato dish. Yeah, shallots are still waiting for the potato dish. Yeah. So you're all good if you've got your sh your shallots still yeah. out. We're gonna, so what we're doing here, everything takes different time. So our chicken is part cooked. So we're gonna finish it off in the sauce and everything. And as that's going, all of our potato ingredients are already hot. So we're gonna put them into the pan. So ideally, when the potatoes start to well, right before that, we're gonna put the asparagus in the oven. Hmm. When, when do the jalapenos go in? They're going to go in at the very end. Okay. Um, we don't want to overcook them, so we're actually going to add them and let the residual heat kind of kind of pull through the uh, the jalapeno. So we have our mustard, balsamic, our strawberries, our onion. We're going to hit it with our maple syrup, about a quarter cup. Okay, so a quarter cup of maple syrup just went into the pan here. We're just gonna keep stirring that around. So you can already see our sauce is becoming more thick. The mustard, the maple syrup. We haven't seasoned it yet. So we haven't, by that I mean, we haven't put any salt and pepper in. Always season your uh, dishes at the very end. Because if we put our salt in right now, we're, we're actually doing a reduced sauce. So if we put our salt in now, the sauce will reduce and the amount of salt we put in, it'll be extra salty by the time we have our final dish. We always season at the very end. So we have that in. We're gonna put our chicken back in. We're just gonna swallow around. We're gonna drop our heat down to, to just below medium. If your sauce is getting a little bit too thick, you can always add a little bit of water to it. We have our chicken, our strawberries, maple syrup, balsamic, all kind of just, just chilling in the uh, in the pan there. We're at just slightly below medium heat. So we're just gonna let that go. We have our potatoes done and our bacon done. Oh, we did forget, uh, oh, I did forget one step. We are going to add our bacon, what we previously cooked, the lardons. We're gonna add them into the sauce now. Where does the chicken broth go? Chicken broth? I might have missed that step. Oh. If if your sauce thicken, if your sauce thickens up, then you can add add the chicken stock to thin it back down. Thank you. Yeah. So depending on the chicken breast, some some chicken breasts aren't as juicy and they won't extract as much moisture. Some when it comes out as pumped or not pumped, um, well, the chicken stock will actually help add a little bit of moisture back into it. So we have everything in here now, our bacon, our onions. We still have a nice little bit of juice going. If, if you don't have juice, that's when you can add a little bit of the chicken stock. You can kind of see it all bubbling. If you have an aggressive bubble going, turn your heat down a little bit more, do like a um, in between low and medium kind of thing. Every stove is different. We're working on gas. If you're on electric, it'll be a little bit different. Induction, a little bit different. We're kind of just playing around with the different heats. Oven um, yeah, mitt. You lost your sous chefs. Hey, where'd my sous chefs go? We lost ours too. <laughs> oh, really? Violet, yeah, Violet's had enough. I'm still here. <laughs> Jay's yeah, in the yeah. background, though. <laughs> You're more of a cheerleader. <laughs> I cut the bacon. Hey, Burnett's, you're not you're not gonna cook at three in the afternoon. <laughs> not feeling like dinner right now. <laughs> All right, so I just took the bacon out. Uh, the asparagus is going into your 400 degree oven that we already tossed in olive oil, salt, pepper. We're gonna get that cooking. Our 
potatoes are now going to come together. So we're going to go on medium high heat. This. So you have our bacon strips that we cooked before. Nice, crispy, juicy. Just putting on a little bit of paper towel just to take some of that off. Set that aside for now. Can we screw it? No. no. Why are our bacon gone? It's in the dish. All right, so we have our warm potato salad pan warming up right now. Not too hot here yet. What we're going to do though is as it's warming up, we're going to add our shallot. For whoever's asking where the shallot was, this is the time now. Oh, bathroom break. Mm -hmm. so we're just going to, as the pan warms up, we have our shallots going. You can start to see them sizzle a little bit. Do you add any oil? oil in chop the up the bacon. So our nice thick strips of bacon are they're quite solid. So we're going to stack them all up. A little hot. I'm getting hungry. Mm -hmm. How big do you want them? So what I want is you'll cut them in half. Okay. Everyone, you'll cut your bacon strips in half. If you want, you can put those on top there. Then we're gonna go lengthwise. And then we want about a square about yay big. As we're doing that, we want to keep an eye on our shallots. We're sizzling nicely, but not too aggressively. Our chicken's looking nice. We have a nice bubbly goodness going. As Anneli just does that, I want everyone just to give their sauce a little try. Just take a little, little spoonful, get a little bit of everything in there. It's going to be, going to be hot. Hmm. So what you're looking for is just a nice balance. A little bit of that maple, a little bit of salty soy. I was just pretty much spot on there. We're going to hit it with a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt. Our bacon has a little bit more salt content in it. So we're actually gonna just put a little touch of salt. And that's why, once again, I'm always saying the recipe is not uh, for sure. You wanna taste your dish as you go. Uh, if you have a less salty bacon, you might wanna add a little bit more salt. Um, just, just everyone give their dish a try, try the sauce out right now. If it isn't that juicy, add a little bit of the chicken stock to it, just a touch at a time, with a little bit to start with, and then just slowly go up. If you put too much in, you'll have to wait a long time to reduce that back down. So our shallots are got a nice, they're kind of opaque like our onions were. We're going to take our bacon. Now we have our shallots, our bacon just kind of Nestling. Now you can show them how to cut the green onions. So Ali is going to show everyone if they can get out the green onion. <laughs> I'll show Annalise how we're going to cut the onion and then she'll, show, right. she'll show you everyone else. We're going to line all of our onions up. We're just going to take 
take a little bit of the end off. So we can just discard that, you can throw it away. If you have any bruised sections, um, you can just pop those off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be using the green. So you wanna bunch everything all up. And once again, we're gonna go into rocking motion. You want just nice little, little rings and you're gonna go down to about there. You can show them while I keep an eye on this. Where's your better than John? Mm, I don't know. What do you think? Better. <laughs> They're more beautiful. And more beautiful. So, what else is in with the shallots? Is it the bacon? What's in with the shallots in the other pan? Is it just the yep, bacon? So we have bacon and shallots in this pan. Okay. For our potato salad, we have our tomatoes, bacon, onion, chicken in this dish. So what I've done is I've actually just flipped the chicken over and kind of stirred my sauce around, put the chicken back down on the opposite side. We're going to cook it to finish it off, cooking on the presentation side. Oh, somebody asked about jalapenos again. So they're not going to go until the end. Yep. Um, Patience pardon. on the jalapenos. We're going to get there. Yep. Yeah. So if we put them in now, they'll really, we'll really lose the jalapeno, the freshness, freshness of a jalapeno. So it'll be right before we go to serve. That sauce is quite hot. I'm going to put the jalapeno there, so it still has like a little bit of cr like crunch to it. Still has that jalapeno freshness. Uh, if we put it in too much, it'll just like go throughout the whole dish. Um, you'll extract a lot more oils, your, your dish will get a lot hotter. So we're putting out that as a finishing ingredient. So we have our onion cut. I'm going to add the potatoes. I've dropped our onion dish down, or our bacon and uh, shallots down and heat a little bit. Train the tail. So then we're just gonna add our potatoes in there. And as you can see, by cooking them cut side down, we have a nice crunchy edge to them. And by we lost on the floor. And by coating them all in olive oil. They won't stick to the pan. Everyone in the boat. You got a few runaways. Careful. Mm -hmm. One more down there. I can get it not. Yeah. So our potatoes are in, our shallots. Bacon. So we're just going to stir all that together, coat in all that good bacon fat and onion goodness. Those nice crispy edges on our potato. So now, So our chicken, if you have a thermometer, you can put it in where we're looking at about 185. If you're comfortable with touching it, um, you can touch it. We're looking for a firm texture. We're almost good there. Next up for the potato dish, we're gonna take our sour cream. I'm putting about Six tablespoons in. I'm just going to give it a little stir down. Stir around. Mm -hmm. 
It's going to mix with the bacon style a little bit. There'll be some slight separation. So we have that mixed together. We're going to take a little bit of our garlic. We'll put our garlic in there. These are the garlic chips. These are the garlic chips, yeah. You can use the minced garlic. You can use any different style you want. I just wanted to show different ways of cutting it. Mm -hmm. So that's all mixed together. So we were at the medium heat. We're going to drop that down to low heat. We're going to take a look at our asparagus. And kind of just check it. Oh, so Sean just broke it in half there and then. Yeah, took so a right, bite. right now we're, we're warm through with our asparagus. Um, if you don't like crispy asparagus, you can cook it longer. You can turn the heat up to 500 degrees. I like the asparagus quite crunchy still. So it's not raw and like right crisp. It's hot straight through it with a little bit of texture to it. Yeah. Right. A nice snap. Nice snap is what we're looking for. So what we're going to do now, yeah. we're going to turn our chicken down to low. We're going to take our oven and we're going to go to broil. So everyone switch their, put their chicken dish down to low and turn their oven, our asparagus is still in there and tomatoes. We're gonna change the oven over to broil. So what we're going to do now is we're gonna get our cheese cut on top of our chicken and then we're gonna get it all mystery and goodness. And the recipe, it says to chop the brie up. Tonight we're gonna to go with nice long strips. We're gonna get a nice caramelization on our brie. Okay, so. So you want, Annalie's gonna show you, see and she's the, she's gonna show you again, one second. <laughs> So let's get um, everybody get their brie out. Just Can give us, yeah. <laughs> let's for a minute, just talk, of, um, yeah. let people get their brie out. Yeah. What kind of brie is a specific brie you're using yeah. or? It's just a double cream brie. And is it one you sell at the shop? Yes. Local? Yes, actually. Yeah, it's made in Vaughan. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Or Ontario, I consider Ontario. Yeah, yeah. Now you can use different kinds of brie if you want to discuss different kinds of brie. Sure. Yeah, yeah, this is more of a just a just a basic brie. Um, we have different brie's too, but a lot of them I find are just too nice to be using in cooking. Um, kind of a disgrace to cook with them. <laughs> <laughs> this so, one too too has a nice. So different ones you can, you can cook with. Yeah. Some of the fair. nice ones like that Chateau Briand. Yeah. It's called. It's more of a creamy. So if you're actually to brulee it like we're going to. Um, you know, it'd melt before you got a nice crust, whereas this is a younger one, right? Yeah, so it's it'll, more firm and it'll hold its texture better. Yes, yeah. it's, it's young and, and firm. it's not smooshing out the sides. Yeah, so there's all different kinds of breeze. We like the younger one, like I said, because then it gets a nice caramelization on it, holds together. If you put some breeze on, it'll just melt and just, and just disappear. Yeah. Fall apart. Yeah. yeah, so Annalise went to cut one. <laughs> but I did it wrong. <laughs> oh, somebody's asking yep. basil on top of brie. Yeah, yeah, we'll sprinkle that on the end. Yeah, at the end. So we want roughly, we want a decent thickness. I think that's about a quarter inch. Yeah. About a quarter inch piece. Um, if you brie, we have a long piece of brie. If you have a small wheel, just you can stack it up length. What we want to do is cover the whole top of the chicken. So as you cut that, we're all going to. Flip our chicken back over. Oh, the last one. A lot of cheese. Oh, you cut the whole thing out. Okay. Yep. Was I not supposed to? Well, I have three pieces of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I like my cheese. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm just going to move our chicken over, just giving our sauce a little stir here. So see, we have a nice color. Kind of scrape, taking that liquid and just scraping off the bottom. Goodness, you can kind of feel want all that crunchy goodness off the bottom. Just straighten the sides. Mm 
All right, so the boil should be going pretty good. Just going to move our asparagus to the lower rack. Oh yeah, we're ripping now. So we have our broils going. Is everyone on the same page here? We got our broil going in our oven. Our chicken we just flew over, gave our sauce a little stir. Our potatoes are chilling on low here. Uh, is everyone on, on board? We're on the same page? Any thumbs up or? Yeah, I got a thumbs up. All right, perfect. I'll take it. <laughs> so we'll take our nice puree. Put it right over top of the chicken. Very, very consistent cuts from my sous chef. So we're just put one piece over top like that. I'm on a, on a middle rack in the oven. We'll just take our chicken dish, and put it right in there. So what we're doing here now is our chicken's cooked, our sauce is ready. We're gonna caramelize by using the broil. We're cooking from the top of the oven down. So we're gonna cook the cheese. We're gonna hopefully get a nice little crust on the cheese. It's gonna get a little bit of gooey. And as Annalise was saying, it's a younger, younger breed. So it actually, it'll hold together. So it won't just run into a puddle. Um, yeah, and then we'll be almost ready to plate up and have some dinner. So when we do that, actually, you can pop in here now. You can add the great Parmesan cheese. Do you have a great? Yeah. So is everyone does everyone have a microplane or a grater? By microplane, I mean this. It's like a little. Oh, yeah. It's like any cheese grater. If you can get your Parmesan cheese out, we're going to start grating it into the potatoes. Annalise asked me a good question. How much? <laughs> So as a cheese connoisseur like herself, she's probably gonna put in a lot of parm. This comes down to like, if you're a cheese lover, load it up and it'll be a nice cheesy gooey potato salad. If you're not a cheese lover, you just add a little bit. Uh, it's all up to everyone's own discretion. I'm gonna try. Okay. Cause there's not any parm on this. Just kind of push it a little bit as you slide it across. Down a little bit, not too soft as a reason for more. A little bit, push it a little harder. Can you hold this? Hold this? Yeah. And only only that way, right? Perfect. Okay, yeah. Do we need more? Tie it on this side. And we're gonna mix it up here. Just just on this this way. Can I mix it up? Yes, yeah, you want to mix it? Yep. So we mix it together and we can kind of see how gooey it is. And this this the pot pan will be very hot, so we'll be, very be careful. Okay. So just mix it and press it down. There we go. Want to, you don't want to squish them. It's almost like the folding technique of the dessert we did. You want to get it on the edges and get all that in there and pull that into it. So if you do this angle. You come in the edge and then you pray it in. in. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. We have our cheese in there. Our chicken's going. It doesn't take too long on the broil, so we're just going to keep an eye. See, we're already melting. We've got a couple blisters going. Our asparagus is looking good. What we're going to do now, if everyone can get out their shaved almonds. We're gonna just add them to the asparagus dish right now. So this is gonna give them just a little roll around. The tomatoes are blistered and everything. You can see them kind of wrinkly. We're gonna take some of our sliced almonds and we're just gonna put a little bit on there. Cheese is starting to melt. We're gonna pull it out. And we're going to hit it with a little bit of our basil. So we'll just put a little basil on top. There we go. And we'll put that back in. 
So we're getting ready for plating here. Well, that's just finishing off our potato salads on low heat. Our asparagus is almost ready. Chicken's almost ready. We will get, you ready to fix it? Up there. Okay, so we'll just do one plate for now. How's everyone doing? Are we all on the same board? Is everyone having fun? Has anyone purged anything? <laughs> Don't be shy. We won't make fun of you. We'll just help you out. Yep. No questions. No, I think we're good. Okay, right, is everyone ready for plating wise? We have our cheese melting and ours is our cheese is almost ready. In the slider. Yeah, ours is ready. So that took what, maybe two minutes? We have some that's, we, we lost a piece, but that's going to happen. We have our potato salad. So at this time, we haven't put our green onion in, so we wanted to keep that to the end. We're going to put our green onion into our potatoes. Why I leave some ingredients to the very end is because I want that freshness. So if we cooked everything for a long period of time, you'd have a monotone kind of flavor. So I just picking up some chunks of onion. Up. We'd have, it'd be monotone and everything would be kind of dull and overcooked. So adding that fresh onion at the end will add some taste. When we pull our chicken off, instead of the side, I'm gonna add the jalapeno and stir that into the chicken sauce. When it cleans the sauce up, and gives a little pop. So on that note, we're gonna take our chicken. We're just gonna set it aside. Some of that brie goes in the sauce, not a bad thing. The sauce is nice and thick and caramelized. Now is when we'll take that jalapeno. We're gonna add that in. So you're adding into the sauce. Okay. In the sauce, yeah. Oh, salad. The jalapeno just went into the sauce, folks. So we're all we're off heat on everything right now, and we're basically letting the heat that was in the pans and the sauces, the potatoes, carry over and slightly cook that jalapeno, slightly cook the onion. It'll just soften it up, but it'll still keep that fresh note of it. So I'll just add, just make your dish pop a little bit. Okay, so plating. You want to do a plate? I'll do a plate. No. Okay. <laughs> Everyone ready to plate? We got thumbs up. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to start off. The base is going to be our nice potato salad. I don't want the potato salad. So we want to keep it. I know we're doing family style, but part of me always still has to make it look pretty. So we're chefy. Yeah, chefy. So we're keeping it nice and tight to the center. So we have our potatoes down. Take a little bit of our asparagus. We're just gonna tuck it off slightly off center. Of our almonds on there. So we're gonna take our nice roasted tomatoes. And we're just gonna kind of nestle them in close to the potatoes. Nice colors. Mm -hmm. Looking beautiful. Mm -hmm. A little bit more almonds from the pan on there. 
Now there's two ways you can, you can add the one big piece of chicken or what I like to do. So we're gonna just take our chicken breast on an angle. We're gonna come down on an angle like that. Two reasons, it looks nice and you can make sure your chicken is cooked. We're just gonna kind of nestle it in like that there. Now we have our sauce. The sauce is nice and caramelized. We're just going to add a nice dollop in the center. And we'll just take a, this wasn't on the list, but just in case anyone makes a nicer looking dish than mine, I had to pull out a couple of secret ingredients. So we just have some microgreens we're just gonna top. So there we have our baked asparagus with almonds and roasted cherry tomatoes. We have a warm potato salad and we have our chicken with strawberries and brie. Wow. Looks amazing. Looks very ugly. Looks like it looks good though. Well, I so Kate's gonna have the first bite since she hosted us. Oh no, we gotta get the cat sitter in here. Linda, okay, get the, get Linda Pike, you get your butt in here, ladies. Somebody said yours is prettier than ours. <laughs> well, I look forward, if you can tag all of your, um, if you can take a picture of your final dish, take the, uh, the wine cellar and tea shop in it. Uh, I'd love to, uh, I'd love to look through all your uh, pictures and that and see, see how everyone did. The smell is phenomenal. Come on in, Linda. She's going to be our taste tester tonight. What? Linda loves food. All right, so we have a taste tester. So you want to get a little bit of all the components in there. So we have the cheese, the sauce. Well, there. Fine. That was the chicken she just tried there, I think. Mm. And oh, there's some blistered tomatoes. Mm. I recommend getting a little chicken brie and then the sauce. I thought, oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't have the sauce. All right. How's it tasting? How's is everyone eating or? Fabulous. Mm -hmm. Oh. Does anyone have any questions? We've got a couple minutes left. If anybody wants to ask Sean a question, now's the time. Dessert. Oh, the dessert, yeah. Oh, the dessert, you're right. The dessert's pretty um, easy. Yeah, pretty straightforward. <laughs> the work's done. Our dessert is the best one, I think. Oh, there's the dessert coming out of the fridge. So yeah, so we have, we have our dessert here. It's pretty straightforward to how to plate. I know everyone's eating, so I don't think I have to show you how to dig into it, but we will, we can try it too. Yeah, let's try. Oh, I think we got a taste tester yeah, over so. here with me. I, I have um, a little taste tester. I think you. I think this girl right here, Miss Emma, is going to be our taste, taste tester. All right. I thought maybe. <laughs> so cooling down our cheese is mixed, is not mixed, is firmed up a little bit. So get right in the bottom there. You can chop up a little fresh mint to go on the top. Put a little more maple syrup on top if you'd like. Mm. All right, I'm just gonna taste test the dessert. I think it will be good. Um, right here. How is it? Good. That was so good. Fun. Can you give the crowd here a little? Uh, I need a little strawberry first. <laughs> Oh, you're not willing to give any up yet, are you? <laughs> Smell like. All Smell right. Like. Share. Yeah. Here. That's all. Okay, come on. <laughs> you enjoy it. Yeah, no, no. 
Awesome. Well, yeah, any questions or anything or any feedback? Are you mm. going to put those recipes? It's delicious. So that the people that were attending we're quiet because we're eating, eating. Yeah. thank you awesome yeah we're gonna be posting so awesome just want to say a huge thank you to sean and annalise emma for coming and doing this with us tonight it's been amazing the food looks incredible um if the video like the recording will be put on our youtube channel for you to access again later so you can cook along again if you want to tomorrow night i don't know about you but i might be diving in but just a huge thank you to sean to annalise to red barn berries emma um everybody who was involved tonight and kathy can and Rika for really instru being instrumental in organizing this whole event so thanks everyone we hope you had a lot of fun and enjoy your great nice dinner Look forward to seeing you thank you sean and annalise thank you thank you